Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this latest show, the eighth show, the eighth episode of the season two of the Diversity BW Hotelier, the GM show series. We're well into our season two after just having completed <clears throat> the first round in the north, west, and south. We got back yesterday to the north. This is our fourth show in the North and a great one. Le Before I really roll out, I really like to thank our sponsors, Diversi. And let's begin by showcasing their case with their video. So we have a great show today uh, and a stellar lineup again. <clears throat> Going by the viewership numbers, we already have one big winning series. Most of you have watched it live and then many a few have watched it in the recordings. Thank you, Veers. Thank you, all the stars. Thank you, B Team BW for all your support and encouragement, and thank you, Team Diversity. Uh, we've been really happy to partner with Diversity for the series. They bring a lot of meaning. They are very strong on the product lineup show, but their commitment to sustainability, kitchens, and whatever happens into a hotel with their cutting edge products is tremendous. A bit about what we do and why we do virtually. This GM show series has been carved out on the virtual platform. And that is because it helps us to bring to you the finest general management talent across the country without having to pull them out physically. Like I always say, you can pull a, you can't pull a doctor out at any odd hour or a gynecologist, but a general manager is always at the helm of the show on, on the deck of his vessel, his ship in control. And of course, and along with their teams, the format of the series is regional where we cover the North, West, South and East. And then we rush into the Northeast and Central with two shows a week, every Thursday and Friday, 4 to 5 p.m. Block your schedule, stay tuned, be there, watch us. Watch the heroes. The show will be relayed online on bwhotelier.com and across our social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Be there, follow us, encourage us to bring you more such gems. And last but not the least, thank you for all your encouragement and support. And follow us on our social media. For those of you who missed watching the show, like I just said, the recordings are available. Don't stress. You can watch them across our platforms that I just mentioned. Without much ado, now let me just dive into the show with a brief introduction on all my co-panelists. Like I, all, I refer to them as stars. They are our heroes. They are the ones who are going to lead this industry into the future. And many of them are going to be CXOs. They will lead their companies, they'll lead brands, they'll lead large portfolios. Uh, Ashwini Goyla, whom we call Ashwini Kumar Goyla, is the area general manager for the Delhi NCR for the Radisson Hotel Group. And he's also the general manager for the Radisson Blue Plaza Delhi Airport. He needs no introduction. He's a man of many achievements. His control over what goes on in his portfolio and he's a master of numbers welcome to the show ashwini your audio is muted thank you, 
Thank you so much, Dinesh. Thank you. Ashwini will today lead the show. He'll moderate it. Right now, let me bring in our first speaker for today, Rajneesh Kumar. He's the general manager of the courtyard by Marriott Aravli in Faridabad. It's very nicely located. Great asset. Uh, you'll just get a backdrop of it. Very fine asset. There you are. Ashwini, bal kam ho gaye thode. Namit Agni Hotri. Namit Agni Hotri is just flown in from Rishikesh. He's the area general manager for the Rosiet Hotels and Resorts. Welcome, Namit. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, Amit Rana. Amit Rana is the general manager of the Holiday in New Delhi International Airport and uh, extremely well-appointed hotel. Welcome to the show, Amit. Good afternoon, good night. Thank you so much. Pleasure, pleasure. Mohit Kamal. He is the general manager of the courtyard by Marriott Gurugram downtown. Very well-appointed hotel. Welcome to the show, Mohit. Last good afternoon. Thank Hi. you for having me over. Thank you. Last but not the least, Shubhendu Banerjee. He's the general manager of the Crown Plaza today, New Delhi in Okla. Welcome, Shubhendu. Good afternoon, Mr. Khanna. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So, this afternoon, we have this stellar lineup. Amazing show. Let us begin without much ado with these heroes and I shall hand over the baton to Ashwini to take the show ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Bhuvnesh, and really a pleasure to be over here with the with the fellow speakers and the other co-panelists. Um, I think the topic is is an amazing uh, and a very exciting topic about FNB. I think this, this probably is going to be the next biggest revenue streams as we move forward. So without taking uh, much of a time, we'd like to dive into the first question. I think I'd like to ask the first question to Rajneesh who's recently opened a great resort. And Rajneesh, if you can just tell us on a high date today, after the two years dampener, banqueting in the big fat Indian wedding challenge, what are the opportunities, the X factor and the reinvention innovation factor that you follow in the architect? Over to you, Rajneesh. Thank you, Ashwini. And a very good afternoon to all the co-panelists and all the viewers who are watching this brilliant show. Thanks to Bhuvnesh and the entire BW team to get all the hoteliers together to share our views about you know, what you know, the uh, future is going to look like for the industry. And today's topic is about FNB shaping up the in, you know, future of uh, the hotel industry. That has always been the case. Uh, even uh, before pandemic, FNB was always a great contributor to uh, not just the top lines uh, or the bottom lines, but also to the reputation of a hotel or a brand. Post pandemic, uh, certainly a lot has changed. Uh, as uh, the question, uh, Shwini, was about how things have shaped up, particularly from a banqueting or from a wedding point of view. Um, and you touched upon the big fat wedding. Um, I would say, you know, big fat wedding is, is not going away. It will always remain in the DNA of the wedding business in our country. However, what has changed over the last uh, few months, particularly post-pandemic, is that um, the um, big fat weddings have become more intimate in nature. And as a result, uh, these weddings have become more of a destination wedding. And this is what we observed, you know, and we were, we were really fortunate to kind of open the resort at a time when the pandemic was almost at its fag end. And uh, there was a huge pent up demand because people who were willing to get married, you know, they had to hold onto it for good two years and all of a sudden everybody wanted to get married and we saw that there were smaller weddings happening the one of the first set of business that came back post pandemic or even during the mid of pandemic uh, i think other than uh, staycations or leisure the drivable destinations was weddings um i think wedding now is um, not just about pent up demand you know wedding has become a very very strong contributor to our uh, business across all our hotels um and it, you you also asked about opportunity, you know, to put some perspective, you know, in terms of how the opportunity um, looks like 
particularly in the Indian uh, subcontinent, about 35% of our demography, 35% of our population is in the age group of 20 to 39. Now, if I say 35% of 1.4 billion, you can imagine the ocean of opportunity in terms of number of people who are ready to get married, right? It's more than the population of, uh, you know, say even United States. Uh, so that's the that's kind of opportunity that lies uh, uh, in front of us. We are already ca capitalizing on this huge um, uh, base. Uh, big fat weddings, as I, as I said, have become intimate, but there is no shortfall in terms of uh, spending. People have actually started spending more to make it more experiential. Um, uh, again, to quote an example in terms of uh, how it has changed in terms of experiences is, uh, the fact that now it's not just about um, you know a mehdi or you know uh, um, you know or any pre or post wedding event, but it's also about how the experiences are going to be captured for all the guests who are attending the wedding, and that has become more critical for the couples who are organizing weddings these days. So it obviously gives you opportunity to uh, capitalize on uh, enhancing your commercials at the same time making it a holistic experience. So to sum it up, great opportunity. In terms of weddings um, ahead, uh, this is just the right time. It can't be better. Um, and I'm really happy that all of us are witnessing that. Over to you, Rashmi. Thank you so much, Rashmi. And I think I agree with you. The big fat Indian wedding is not going anywhere. But yes, it's become more intimate. And I think uh, that's what's uh, happening. So with this, I move to the second question to Namit. Uh, in a room, what's the story? And how do you bring your guests to your restaurants from the room? Is that your agenda? And if yes, how do you swing it? Uh, well, thank you for the question, Ashwini. A very important question. Uh, taking a cue, like you mentioned, like food and beverage is the next big thing. And all of us as astute hoteliers know one thing, that the real chunk of the revenue comes in food and beverage. Because here, if you give an experience, you know, the way that I look at it or our company looks at it, it is give a complete sensorial experience. It is like a chef who invites you to his house that is the way we look at our restaurant business. Very simply put, a guest who comes into our hotel, I have to give him the experience which is bespoke. And there is nothing more than food and beverage which can give that. So the couple of elements that we look at as brand is, one is sensorial experiences in terms of how is the design of the particular restaurant. For example, if I talk about a few of our uh, brands, one is uh, the brand called Chini. The largest tented restaurant, which is 140 seater Pan Asian restaurant. Then we have Kheer, which is a 300 plus Indian restaurant. So when we have these kind of products out here, and when we send the first communication out to our guest, we create an F&B element also with our reservation forms. At the time of check-in, all our chefs, whether they are, you know, whoever, because the chefs are the master creators. So they are the ones who invite our guests over. We give an opportunity to do, whether it's an in-room dining experience, we create that. We don't consider an in-room dining experience. We consider that an opportunity for a unique dining experience. When somebody wants to, you know, dine under the stars, we have those, you know, places where a person can dine under the stars. So it is not only the restaurants that we have our entire story built around, which is, you know, like I said, has to be interactive. If the chef doesn't come to your table, then I guess, you know, you will not be able to bring the guest to your table because simply put, you know, the mask, you like to always meet the director of the movie. Same way, you know, it's the chef who comes in. So that's how we do it in our hotels is that we create the story because nothing is, nothing sells bigger than the story, whether it is the produce of origin. So we start like, you know, where did we get this millet from? You know, this is the farm. You know, these are the backgrounds. Everybody tells a story. What is the crockery we use? Why is it different? Why is it, why the cutlery slightly, you know, different? Why is the glassware different? Everything creates a differentiation in our brand. And then also when a guest walks in, we put segments, you know, are they celebrating an occasion? Are they coming here for a first date? I, is that gentleman coming to propose to his partner? You know, you have to engage, you got to personalize. And that what makes the difference. And I think in the coming days, you'll find the uniqueness coming in here, wherein a restaurant manager will receive a guest at the porch and will you know, do a bond voyage at the porch. So that's how I get my guests into all my hotels. Thank you for that uh, question. It was a brilliant question. 
Thank you, Namit. Thank you. And I think you touched upon a very important aspect about the design of the restaurant. So I guess my next question goes to Amit. Amit now, and Amit spoke about design of the restaurant. I would like to speak about kitchens. Kitchens are very tricky and they must be part of the crack the puzzle code from the alignment and the revenues, making it a sticky factor. How do you complement your kitchens to the design of the restaurant and to the FNB overall? Over to you. Thank you so much, Ashwani. I think it's a great, again, a great question. Uh, you know, layout and efficient workflow in the kitchen is something which is very critical. Uh, in today's world and age that we live in, the design and the workflow of the kitchen is very, very critical. Uh, you know, to make sure that we use quality ingredients. Procurement of those uh, ingredients that we are procuring is very, very critical. So making sure we have high yield and, and uh, making sure there's minimum wastage. So that's one priority that as a company, IFG has and we very seriously take that. Uh, sourcing of quality is very important of ingredients. Uh, training, which is also a very important element in today's world where we know uh, where we turnover is extremely high. So training of the staff and chef is very, very critical while we're in the kitchen area. Many engineering is another element which is very critical. And I think uh, that analyzes and gives a code of today where how effective we're running our kitchens and uh, many engineering plays a very key role in it. But lastly, it's technology and adapting and embracing that. In today's world, if we don't look at technology uh, and if we don't look at how uh, innovative ways of uh, things that we can adapt, it becomes a challenge in the kitchen. Uh, hygiene and food safety, you know, wastage in kitchen and how well we store our kitchen material and and. What is the temperature? Is it the right temperature that we're keeping our stuff in? It just, it just makes it, uh, you know, it's it's a no-brainer in today's world. Hygiene and safety is very important, and and we know how the world is evolving. And uh, engaging customer also is very important. You know, understanding what the customers are looking for, their feedback. You know, engaging with them and finding out what is the right. So that that plays a very critical role. You know, it's not just the service; it's kitchen which plays a very big role. Uh, as my colleague mentioned earlier also, I think kitchen plays a very, uh, and marketing promotion, you know, doing, uh, uh, making sure it's enough that we talk about to our customers and how we communicate to them. Uh, innovation is something which we can't get away with. You know, that's something in today's trend and world that innovatively how well we manage things and how well we use that uh, innovation is very important. Uh, and then adapting to trends. What is happening today is the trends are changing at a very fast pace. And, and we've seen in past, uh, you know, pre-COVID and today, the trends have completely changed. Portion control, size. These are some important elements which we can't, you know, get away from. Uh, and, and lastly, I think, you know, uh, kitchens are heart of the hotel. You know, I believe if, if, if the blood has to circulate, if the kitchens are not functioning properly, the body will, the hotel will not operate uh, effectively. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. And I think you touched upon some very important aspects, which uh, I would be asking the, the fellow speakers. And I think uh, you spoke about uh, menu engineering and innovation. So with yeah. this, I would like to ask my next question to Mohit. Mohit, reinventing menus and catering to local and traveler cuisine sensibilities while staying relevant and keeping the fatigue away. And with fatigue, what I mean is that you need to balance it for your loyal guest or your aspirational clientele. And Amit touched upon something called innovation. How do you manage that in your in your hotel and your restaurants? Over to you, Moen. Thank you, Ashwini. And good afternoon, fellow, fellow speakers. Uh, great question, Ashwini. Uh, yeah, you know, menu engineering is so relevant today because travelers, uh, travelers, the number of visits in a hotel has increased so much, you know, the number of vacations have also gone up and uh, people start comparing, right? So there is that aspect of, of local food, there is street food. You, you didn't earlier have hotels emulating street food, you know, keeping some bit of that in, in their respective restaurants. You see Sunday brunches, there is so much of a very high element of, of local street food, whether it's Indian, whether it's Asian, right? Uh, that's one part. There's comfort food as well. Yeah. A lot of, lot of your burgers, sandwiches, right? Uh, pastas. You can't not have a dal makhani and a butter chicken if you're in this part of town. So yes, uh, yeah, you can have, you have sushis, but your menus need to have some of these items as well. And I think it's very, very relevant. Uh, and Amit touched, 
touch this thing about menu engineering uh you know menus today have have gone gone to that that trend of having actually been changed over a factor of about 3 months to about 4 months there are food promotions that happen uh there is there is plant based menus that have just come in so much right uh, the dietary restrictions are already over there keeping all of this uh, and and for for business travelers because where we are located 70% of our of our travelers are business travelers right to ensure that, that, that there is no fatigue in that in that menu there are changes that keep happening it is very very relevant and uh, yeah we we keep reinventing our menus we keep changing changing our menus and this changes practically uh, like i mentioned at least 3 to 4 months we currently are also doing a food promotion so yes so when we look at demographics to see where guests are traveling from and engage with with uh, you know their preferences in terms of holiday destinations is the most most relevant thing as soon as someone comes comes back i i look at it as coming back home is are you really getting what you want right and is it quick is it hot is it is it two point and and once that is done uh yeah i think that that fatigue would not set in thank you so much mohit and i think good luck for your food promotion i hope you're also invited over there for that uh, <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Moet. So I think uh, uh, the, the great, great about about the food, the restaurant, and the and the reinvention of the menus that we are doing. Now, so my next question to you, Shuvendu. Now, all while of this is happening in the hotel and in the restaurant and the kitchen, how do you think the loyalty and the referral programs have worked for you without losing out on the brand salientness? How do you manage to get the guests to the hotel and actually let them know about all of this? Over to you, Shuvendu. Good afternoon, Ashwini, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ashwini, the question you have asked is a very key question for all of us as hoteliers. F&B plays a very important role as far as the revenues are concerned for the hotel, and getting guests and getting customers through the loyalty program is one of the most important thing for each and every brand. And now, the guest loyalty is the most important thing. Reason when you have the customer in the hotel, how you treat them, how what kind of value additions. So loyalty as a as a whole, if you look at the loyalty for for example in IIG we have something called IIG One Rewards. When a guest comes in, he automatically gets the advantage of the IIG dining deal, and he gets across uh, discounts plus rewards. It's not only about the discount which is important nowadays. It's also about the rewards. It's also about how you utilize the uh, the package which you have, or for example. if you look at the number of outlets so for example in india we have 100 plus outlets we have 30000 plus guests those who get the loyalty benefits all across india right so that's what is important when you enter the hotel the moment you enter the hotel that's the recognition which is most important and not only that it's not only about the revenue it's also about the relationship which we build with the customer when the customer walks into the hotel so i believe uh, loyalty is a very very important role and for us uh, 50% of the hotel revenue generates from F&B, and uh, with the catchment area for my hotel, for example, we are in an industrial area, so we have a lot of customers. Those who buy the loyalty program because they not only want the discount, but what they want is the experience when they come with the other guests or their customers. So that is very, very important at the at this juncture. Thank you so much, Shubhendu, and I guess uh, that's. Uh, a very nice uh, uh, the, uh summing it up about how loyalty in the referral program so both you know i think that's that that's true that's how i can i slip in one to you i mean uh, aap sab pooch rahe ho you know because you're somebody who lords over a good portfolio and a great brand uh, right so uh, the great kebab factory uh, uh tell me food is never an easy topic uh, uh, for anybody when it comes to discussing food uh, but there is no taking away from the fact that food is for life i mean we are there imagine if we had shunts like filling in cng petrol or diesel right and there be no test taste what would life be life is beautiful yes smaller the portions better for old hags like me but uh, yeah uh, food is great and we have to keep re- reinventing why is it that we keep rushing back home to bivi ka khana ma ka khana ghar ka khana what can hotels do right but uh, we also have to control wastage you know when we cook portions at home we make it in a manner 
that we consume what is made and nothing goes into the refrigerator. Yes, some bit will, right? And will get carried over, but we should not, we should try not do that. Let me hear from you as an, your expert view on how you've managed it. What is your vision, strategy and plan at the Radisson Blue Mahipalpur or your uh, entire portfolio? Thank you. And I think a very, very relevant question. While we speak about uh, reinventing menus and we speak about menu the creation over here at Bhubanesh, I think it's also important to see how we can manage revenues and also control the wastage aspect of it. So from the revenue aspect, as I, as I, as I mentioned, that this, uh, this, is, this stream is going to be one of the biggest streams as we move forward. I think we all would agree that rooms we have all optimized well over the years. All brands, chains, hotels have really optimized in terms of the room revenues with complex revenue management softwares, algorithms to know and optimize on the on the high demand, low demand dates and manage it. I think from the uh, revenue management for the F&B side, though we've spoken about it initially, but it's something which is still yet to come into, into full force. And that's something which we are trying to do at our hotels over here. One is weekday, weekend pricing, uh, or even pricing for early bird diners. Uh, late diners uh, charging on a on a weekend a higher uh, the surcharge or, or or paying for that and something in catering which is called revenue per square feet. So I think post COVID, a lot of hotels have started charging minimum revenue rental for uh, for the for the food because it's not just about the food rates anymore. And I think that's that's something which you do in terms of menu creation. So my colleague spoke about things like menu creation and reinventing menus. That's something which we do very. Uh, as, uh, at, at our hotels and our and our uh, in our outlets and even in the portfolio, and look at our ABC. And A is is the comfort, food, and staple food like Mohit mentioned, butter chicken and the dal makhani that you need. Without which you're not going anywhere. And the B and C are the aspirational food that uh, obviously today the people want Instagrammable food. I mean more than more than the 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 the, the taste that they need. They want to first. You want to uh, click pictures. You want to click a picture first, and, and they wonder tell how them. I wonder how we ate food for all our years without without taking a picture. I mean, we, and we needed stadium. a fork, we needed a knife, we needed a spoon. <laughs> but now, now you need a camera. To create picture. a picture for a mobile. I think you could do that. So that is what that is what you need today. So you need your B and C's as your Instagrammable food because. I think the audience today and the target uh, guests today have become very experimental and they like to experiment and explore the new food and the cuisines. And that is, I think, a good part because they're ready to pay a higher cost for it. And it, of course, as uh, Rajneesh mentioned also in the start, that it's also a, a reputation build up for your, for your outlets in the local market. So that's, that's something which we do over here and we study our menus to a, to a great degree. In terms of the wastage and the cost control, I think the portion size, uh, and I think uh, at our hotels, we do uh, a la carte and a la minute portion sizes, both for buffet as well as for a la carte. And the portion sizes are again seen and checked. I think gone are the days when you mentioned old hags. I don't think so, Bhutanesh. I think everybody is very uh, wellness conscious now and, and people don't want to uh, have too much of it. They may want to have a variety of food, but not have too, too, too big a portion size. And, and there are uh, outlets in our hotels where we have uh, serves one or serves two. That is, that lets the guests know how to order, or what to order, and how much to order. And that makes it simpler and easy for the kitchens to cook for a one or a two or a family size portion size. And also to ensure that even the food on the buffet is not lying for two hours, three hours without being touched. So it's, it's made uh, in a smaller portion, kept on the buffet, kept fresh. And so that once it's consumed within half an hour, again, a fresh portion comes in. And th I think the guests that today understand that and they're absolutely fine to wait for the food to come uh, and, and get fresh food at the buffets so that to be able to, to control the wastage. So that is something which, which I would say, of course, and of course, also the fact that the menus have become slightly smaller in size now. Now, people don't have large uh, uh, menus so that you don't have a heavy mise à that you need to keep with yourself, whether the order will come or not come. So depending on that, people today uh, are happy to have smaller menus uh, so that we don't keep too much of uh, mise à plat and that goes at the wastage. And of course, the chefs are being very, very creative today to see how the food of the menus can be used from one to another area and how to recreate the food, which which probably may get wasted. So I think that's that's something which we follow at our hotels and, and that's something really worked for us. So over to me, do you, do you, how do you measure wasted? Do you weigh them? What do you do? So do you cycle them. What happens to food wastage? Do you do you share it with with the catchment with people all around you? 
So no, no, Bhubnesh, we, we are an ISO 22001 hotel and that doesn't allow us to serve any food which is uh, lying for such a long time to be served to anybody over here. So what we do is we've got an organic waste compost wherein we, we put all of this into a compost and, and, and use it for fuel that we would like to use it for. So whatever wastage that happens across banqueting or across the F&B outlet, but we don't like to give it to anybody because that is something which is food uh, not edible for the for the, for the for the catchment area. And that's something which we, we follow at all our hotels over here. And in terms of weighing of wastage, so we have two ways to do it. One is our software that tells us that how much of the food is received and how much of the food is churned out into the consumption at the end of the day. So it's a very uh, uh, simple software that tells you how much items and how much of the portion sizes have gone. Uh, the recipe uh, uh, quantity is fed in into the system to tell us what happened to the food uh, away from that. So tell me, don't um, you know, we were discussing in uh, a show last week, um, live kitchens is actually a way through where you can make real-time quantities, right? And what the guest wants. But yes, it takes a lot of time. But then you're not you're not generating waste. You're not cooking in excess. Absolutely, uh, Bhuvnesh. I totally agree with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, so can I take a short commercial break? Welcome back. With this, I would like to ask my next question to Rajneesh. Rajneesh, now, what is you, you recently opened a resort again. Uh, what is the next big trend in hotels, F&B, that you think are, uh, are there? And what would you like to bring back if you were given an option uh, to your hotel uh, uh, as, a, as a latest F&B trend? Thank you for that question, uh, Ash Ashwini. And uh, well, F&B is all about innovation, creativity, uh, which was touched upon by a few co-panelists earlier. Um, what I have observed over the last uh, few months, particularly post-pandemic, is that there is a rising uh, trend or a demand or a consideration rather in terms of, you know, being, a, you know, a sustainable F&B business. And that's where we see, we notice that there's a lot of hyper-localization that is happening uh, across most of the F&B business setup. Um, what we do um, at the resort is, we currently have more than 90% of our procurement, um, you know, through this hyper-localization approach, which means that it not only helps you to, um, you know, generate uh, income for locals, but also helps you uh, rationalize your carbon footprint. And I think today's diners are, are, are more uh, aware about such things. And uh, we have observed that, you know, today's diners also want to interact about, you know, the... Uh, sustainable practices that our FNB service uh, provider uh, is into. So that's that's one aspect, which is rising uh, sustainability consideration. Uh, and it's no more greenwashing, you know. Uh, FNB business can't appear to be, you know, eco-friendly or sustainable. This is the need of the hour. We all know, um, and I think uh, not from just from a service provider point of view, but also today's diner is very, very keen and the challenges to keep moving in the right direction. So as, as, as businesses in FNB, we have to ensure that we keep that going. Uh, another trend uh, is about, uh, which I think, uh, you know, a few of you touched upon is wellness. Uh, today, diners are not uh, just fascinated about, um, you know, having something like a wellness, uh, you know, section in your menu. They're more concerned about their intake of calories. While I understand that as per the FSSI guidelines, we all are supposed to have calorific value assigned to each and every item on the menu. Uh, but the diners are not just confined to that. They are also very particular about the intake of the nutrients. You know, they're very particular about, you know, having a balanced approach towards, you know, uh, mindful eating. So that's another thing which is emerging and we are noticing it, um, you know, as well. 
uh, across our uh, restaurants. One thing that will never go away, uh, but has become more important of lately is about um, immersive and experiential dining. You know, uh, a few of you also mentioned, uh, I think, uh, was uh, Amit uh, who, and Shivendu who mentioned about uh, the importance of uh, chefs interacting with, uh, you know, guests. You know, so things like, you know, a chef table, which was always, um, you know, happening across our, our, our hotels. Um, it has gone even beyond that. If I say immersive, uh, today's diner uh, wants to be surrounded with things that could add up to the experience. And I, I'll put an example, you know, um, being fortunate to be um, at a location where we are surrounded with a lot of greenery, a lot of organic farmings, you know, all around the resort. Uh, what we did was we tied up with a few local farmers uh, with the intent of, uh, you know, creating employment opportunity and source of income for them, which turned out to be a big success a story for us, uh, was, you know, creating picnics in the farm, creating dining experiences in the farm. We would take a bunch of guests, you know, to the farm. It could be close family members. It could be you know, top level uh, leadership or, you know, of uh, a corporate or, uh, as part of their offsite uh, team building. Uh, we would take them to a local farm and everything, you know, like we, we used to do, you know, uh, farm to folk, right? Now a guest today's diner is able to see things happening in a surrounding which is more immersive. So that I think uh, people are appreciating and a, a lot of focus is being given. And that obviously is, is, a, is a trend uh, that we see uh, in the FNB space. Another is, and uh, I think Bhuvanesh and uh, Suni, you also highlighted, was about, uh, you know, digital media technology. Um, I think, um, you know, in, based on a survey, which I was probably reading through once, 62% of today's generation, the so-called Gen Z, they are digital native, right? They are driven to your restaurants based on what they see on your Instagram or your social media pages. So it's not just about putting a post in a social media. You have to be very, very mindful about the content that you create. It's about the virtual experience of a diner that plays a critical role before the diner is even placed in the chair inside your restaurant. So that's another thing which um, you know uh, is coming as, 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 as a trend and that will only evolve uh, as the uh, digital penetration happens. Mohit, I think, uh, mentioned about uh, having plant-based offerings uh, in the menu. Um, again, I think uh, based on one survey, you know, 52% of the people felt that they are flexitarians, the so-called flexitarians, you know, which means they are not vegetarians, but they are very conscious about getting there at some point in time, right? So it's very, very important to for F and B uh, business across our hotels, to start looking at that trend which is emerging, you know, more and more people opting for uh, vegetarian options in the menu, particularly plant based, right? As a thumb rule, uh, what we follow across all our hotels, including this resort, is thirty percent of our menu selection is plant based, and and there are pl plenty of options available today, you know, plant based, you know, from a seafood to you know a dairy. Right, you have got all these options available, you know, through plant based these days. So, a lot of um, diners are actually opting for uh, plant based menus. Most of the QSRs, you know, like even say a, a McDonald's of the world or a KFC of the world, they are also getting into you know having those items on the menu which are plant based. So, obviously, that's another trend which we uh, you know see happening, and uh, we are already in line with ensuring that uh, we, we follow the suit and we have these options available. So yeah, these are some of the trends that I can think of, Ashwini. Ashwini, I'll just come in over here, you know, because uh, you know, talk about trends and getting into plant-based menus, that is not by choice, that's by force, because that's a trend, right? So they want to go along and they want to sail with opportunities, but I guess somewhere we've got to be responsible and we've got to set trends and take calls. For instance, I don't want to, uh, you know, put my weight behind this, but I am a so-called inflexitarian, right? 
So, I mean, I'm somebody who's a vegetarian. I've not known what uh, 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 any other food is. But yeah, I guess somewhere we've got to take responsible calls that look, this is what we are going to do. So that 30% is, I think, a lower bar. We should lift it, but that's my opinion. Back to you, Ashwini, you are the same case. <laughs> thank you, Bhupnesh. I think this, uh, so thank you, Rajneesh. I think some 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 good trends that you mentioned, and I think I agree with Bhupnesh, this, this has to now move on with just, uh, and we raise the bar, but I think it's a great start that's happening across most yes. of the hotels yes. and most yes. of the companies. So, I think that's that's where we come to, and 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 you you spoke about sustainability, Rajni. You should talk about uh, 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 flexitarian and the experimental dining. So I think yes, that's that's something which everybody would want to uh, move move into. So with this, I would like to ask my next question to Namit. Namit, with all of these trends happening around us, uh, how do you manage the alignment challenge with behind the wall kitchen ops with the chef and his team? It's not very easy to convince the chef. Uh, to do what what is what is this, and usually the chefs have their own uh, voice and their own choice. How do you handle this at your at your uh, hotels? Uh, that's a very nice question, Ashwini, because you know it's all about uh, like your tagline of this show. It's all about leadership, and leadership starts from the helm. And here, what we do is like we have a very engaged uh, management style, wherein which the restaurants are led by the chefs. You know, in terms of cost management, in terms of the F and B service, how they want to do it. Because at the end of the day, they're showcasing what they produce. Uh, the way we see it as a brand, whether it's our European hotels or India-based hotels, what we look at it is as these people are restaurant owners. These people bring in the maximum revenue. These people need to have a very robust system of understanding yield managements. They need to understand what raw material costs are, what are recipe costs. They need to understand because the amount of subsections that you have in a kitchen are immense. It is all about how you engage the team. It is all about how interactive your team is. You know, we have or like most of our kitchens are, you know, open kitchens, where in which every restaurant has a live kitchen. So the chefs are the actual, you know, the main protagonist of the show that's happening there. And for that, training is very important. Body language is very important. The art of communication is very important. They have to know a lot because they are the ones who are engaging with our guests. And when a chef is engaging with a guest, a knowledgeable chef, a person who's passionate, because food is a science also, you know, food is just not that, you know, you just go there and, you know, do something and come out with it. There's a lot of science involved. There's a lot of passion involved. And, in, and we'll all agree that all of us have to handle all our chefs with little kids gloves also, because they are passionate about it. They're, they're creators, you know, they're like artists who are scientists and you cannot, you know, have, a, you know, you have to give them freedom. You have to take them. So what we do is, we do field tours. I take my chefs to places like, you know, Upper Assam, figure out, you know, things. Where do you get these kind, you know, the kind of very local produce? Because today, like a couple of the uh, panelists said, it's all about going global. But, but the way we look at it, it's, it's like, let's go global, you know, global, but yet local. So food tours, getting in Michelin chefs to do pop-up events from there. You know, what we do is we tell these Michelin chefs, come in, do a pop-up event. Don't get your backup team. Let my team be the backup. It's all about learning, you know, rather than one person being sent and doing one course and coming back. Here we do, what we do is participative, collective style of management, which involves financial aspects, experiential aspects, innovation, and a freedom to run what you want. And of course, like one of my colleagues mentioned, it's all about the change of the menus. We have our own uh, farms uh, in Delhi, so where we do organics. So the chefs go to the farming, we take the guests to do farming there. So what we say is be a farmer to a diner concept also what we run. And, you know, having said all this, it's all about the, I think kitchen brigade is like the nervous system of any hotel. The healthier the nervous system, the better the profits, the happier the ownership and the happier. So it's all about happiness, which comes, you know, from food. It's like something which touches your soul and your heart. And I think if we are able to touch the heart of any individual, I think, you know, you won the game. Thank you, Namit. I think very well said. Uh, the, the chefs are the creative artists and, uh, and and instead of going global, we should all look at going local. So I think that's, that's uh, something which I which I take from you. So my next question moving on would be to Amit. Amit, uh, while we are going local and while we are looking at the menu engineering and the, and the menu push and the, and the menu uh, 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 choices and the menu flexibility, uh, what about the portions? What is right and enough and not wasting any expensive food or the pre-cooked 
uh, what are your views around that? Well, thank you again, Ashwini. Uh, I think, as you rightly said, uh, wastage and portion control is something around sustainability, and that's very, very important. I mean, today, standardization and portion size is very critical. Not too much, not too less. The balance between that is very critical today. You know, using of measuring tools. Uh, in in the historic kitchen earlier, it was all by by only experience, by by only way of the chefs were not very you know comfortable using measuring tools. But today, I think that's become the need of the art to use the right measuring tools and to make sure your recipes are right. That's something which we can't shy away from. You know, monitoring food usage, what is used. You know, ordering something should not be on whims and wishes. It should be monitored. And there are systems and tools, diversity pioneers in that. IHG, as a company, we've taken it very seriously. And we monitor food wastage and food control across globally. And that's something which is a mandate given to us uh, on food monitoring and how much are we uh, daily yielding out of stuff. You know, implementing FIFO, uh, that's something which is, you know, a thing which has been there since ages. But implementing and bringing it to life is very critical and very important. Uh, daily specials and limited offers are something which will help you uh, looking at seasonality of way of working and making sure you attract and have nutritional value to food also while you're doing portion control. Uh, offering flexible portion size, like you rightly said, you know, making sure your menu says that before a guest orders in room service, thinking it's not going to be enough for me, to making sure it has the calorific value, and it has the portion size that it can feed to. Uh, you know, training and upselling uh, and while discussion portion is very, very important. You know, training is something which is, uh, while the conversation is happening with the guest, that awareness is very critical. Today, uh, if you're not able to communicate that message that we're living in, it, it, it's, it, it's not going to have a positive outcome. Uh, you know, customer feedback, whenever that is not you know, it's very important how seriously we take that because end of the day, the consumer is is something who's or somebody who's is today giving us that feedback. And if you don't manage and if you don't able to, you know, utilize that feedback, it's not going to add any value to what we're doing. Uh, you you mentioned about compost. You know, making sure. I personally think there's nothing that should go to compost, but if there is, how are we able to utilize it today in using it on farms? giving it, donating it to the farmers, because that's the food which is coming out. If you're able to recycle that food uh, and if you're able to utilize it back, uh, is, is very. then lastly, you know, as I said, tracking and disciplining the kitchen every day during the morning. The first thing the chef comes on the table with the morning meeting is, is how much food was in the bin. You know, that is something which is something which, will help us automatically become to a place where we are controlling our portions, making sure we procure the right ingredients. You know, there's no point getting a great deal on a fish if the yield of the fish is only going to be 40%. If the 60% is going into the dustbin, there's, there's this waste of money. And money saved is money earned. So today, you know, whether it's revenue management. So portion control, I think, is very critical and food wastage is something which should be taken very, very seriously. And how much yield are we getting out of stuff? And procuring the right ingredients is very important. So, yeah, uh, actually over here, you know, pehle zamane mein bolte the, chef se poochte the, ustad bhi the, guru bhi the. Sir, andaza kya hai? Yeah, tu andaze se itne kilogram ye dal de, itne gram ye dal de, wo dal de. There were no apps. So, it was all approximation. So, I mean, we progressed in life and progress means, you know, I feel very guilty coming out of a five-star dinner and you see people who are less fortunate outside who can't even manage one meal, forget about two square meals. So that, that feeling of guilt should drive us to, to, to give speed to this part of uh, a hotel's operation. Yes, I agree with uh, Amit. To compost me kyon jai. Right. Absolutely, sir. I think, and I think it is it is going and more than the hotels, I think the guests today also, I don't know if you know, but a lot of hotels are ready to pay higher and, and choose a hotel that has a sustainability uh, index or a sustainability option uh, or an eco-certified hotel or a tag on their on the brand website. 
so uh, it's not just about uh, the hotels and this is something which we all have to move in uh, sooner than later uh, if you are not going to be sustainable and not have the yield management uh, with us it will, it will not work further on true sorry, sorry one thing which i forgot to add actually is taking the buffet rounds as them managers all of us play a very critical role if our chefs know that the general manager himself or herself is going to make sure that they take a buffet round uh, before the beginning of the meal at the end of the meal automatically the 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 principle of controlling the buffet wastage will get eliminated true true uh, i think very well said <clears throat> yeah sorry i just interjected yeah <laughs> okay so good so moving on i think uh, you, you you spoke about uh, the food and the yield management amit uh, moving on uh, my next question to mohit <clears throat> now are these a challenge to you all day dining in specialty restaurants in a hotel the high street restaurant and the qsr challenge from nightmare to opportunity what are your views around this mohit thanks ashwini i think uh, qsrs let me address that piece first uh, i won't say they are a challenge but i think they they would they would they challenge us in one way which is consistency because uh, one of the things that there a lot of guests come back and and sometimes say is like oh you know what aaj ye chef hai isne banaya to bahut maza aaya you know huh. and if there is someone else who's unable to make it to that way uh, yeah then it's like theek tha lekin na wo baat nahi thi you know so when you get to hear about some of those things uh, is is where i feel that that qsr has definitely challenge us in terms of consistency and for which we do something which is which is called a taste panel and uh, this is something that mary follows all across yeah so if you got one chef who's a specialist we try and try and ensure that there is a number 2 there's a number 3 person who can who can obviously work around the same piece and ensure that 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 consistency stays across whether that that main specialist is there or not there talking about uh, yeah you know and then then about personalization what what you can do in a in a restaurant for a guest in terms of personalization in terms of customization in terms of some bit of creativity adding extra spice low spice all that is something that that you can do uh, within a hotel which i think guests also do want uh the other piece is also in terms of freshness you know because a lot of fresh food the portion size is controlled someone say oh mere mein na fries thoda kam kar do ya thoda zyada kar do add something more can you try and work around some of those things definitely that is done so yeah i wouldn't say that, that there is there is a a challenge as far as qsrs are concerned but yes there is always a learning that that has to happen stand alone restaurants oh boy they are giving a run to hotels for money you know they, there was this moment and there was this time where you wanted a great experience you had to only go to a five star hotel mm-hmm. and we saw this when when you know uh, i think a lot of us started working in hotels that quality had to be only in a five star hotel right and a lot of us were were probably lucky enough to to get that experience to walk into a hotel and see what actually happens behind those great doors yeah now you was aspirational it was aspirational it was it was absolutely it was so aspirational and uh, you know with things having opened up so much and and chains being being uh galore right you've got an option to to travel to any city and and choose and make comparisons and uh, yes coming back to standalones uh, standalones are uh, ha- and have really upped their game so much that uh, the quality that that a stand alone can actually give you would probably be equivalent to a great restaurant in a five star hotel uh i think that is great as well because that obviously doesn't let a hotel or a brand or that restaurant get complacent you know once there is that competition there is that challenge there is someone else who keeps challenging and you know when when uh, and this is something that we do here with guests as well when when a guest tells us saying that listen i didn't quite enjoy what what the chef made here for me we actually asked this asked the guest saying sir where is it that you beat in this food earlier and we will have one of our chefs go or if it's in a different city we will have a chef over there go and go and try and see what what this recipe is and uh, you know once you're able to do that i think that the challenge is is which will always keep you keep you afloat and keep you up ahead of that game <laughs> 
and challenge is good you know because there were there were these times when the chef uh, chef would come back and say aise banta hai you know and this is the way it is being made whether the guest likes it or it doesn't like it well, well this is how it is and it's just changed completely uh yeah so so i think it's 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 great it's a great opportunity as well for for all of us within this sphere uh to challenge each other because this is also what what we do for uh for stand alone restaurants as well yeah thank you Wait, more so i mean only a, only a follow up question on this so just a, a point would you think specialty restaurants still have a future in hotels or an all day dining is the best uh it varies brand to brand in our courtyard it's very classic so you've got uh an all day dining restaurant right and and you've got uh got a bar that's that's typically how the brand really works specialty restaurants i think are there to stay to offer choices uh but should it be multiple where let's say a hotel should have three four or even five types of specialty restaurants i think uh, that is a food for thought depending upon whether it's a resort hotel uh, as a leisure de- as a leisure destination or a or a city destination um you look at gurgaon you know the number of outlets that there are whether it's cyber hub whether it's horizon uh the fantastic right and and today a customer doesn't want to come back and and get holed up only into a hotel you come in into a hotel you go out for your meetings you've got your your breakfast you have a quick meal you're out chances are that lunch is happening outside and 70% of the times the guest is not coming back to the hotel for dinner yeah if it's a longer stay yes uh dinner may happen may not happen and weekends yes uh brunches no brunches but yes uh, coming back to this i think i think we will have to relook at it but it's a it's a debate for later whether i mean you you saw it right even during during the pandemic times and while we were coming out as well a lot of specialty restaurants got converted into mini banquets also yeah you wanted to capitalize on that per square foot to ensure that you made you made most of it but yes probably that's that's a, a debate for later thank you more thank, uh, thank, thank you thank you for your for your comments okay and with this i i moved to uh, shubhendu now shubhendu uh, i think in the start of the conversation somebody mentioned about gen z so wanted to check with you that bringing the gen z while catering to the mature or maybe should be called in the previous gen uh, do they spend as much uh, what do you what do you feel you uh, know in a in a, a five star hotel Ashwini, good question. I think you, Rajneesh, Mohit, everybody covered the point by saying that Gen Z uh, is a different league altogether. Because what we see and what you mentioned and we see in our hotels, <coughs> sorry, is that they are visiting the hotel for an experience. They are not the usual clientele what we have as corporates or as my said whatever segments we cater to. Uh, their preference is very different they are more experiential they'll have snap first eat and drink later so so their their attention span is also very very less i think what makes a difference for us as hoteliers <coughs> sorry is how good and how strong is your social media channels if your social media channel is strong if you are showcasing what you want to showcase i speak to my chefs and say what is that you are doing today that attracts some customers or some guests on my social media that they walk into the hotel to have this food as we see a lot of bloggers a lot of influencers the kind of videos the kind of pictures they post that is what the gen z is all looking about they come here for personalization they come to the hotel for experience so curating an experience curating an instagramable background curating a food which is more instagramable that is what they look at they usually don't come for a buffet they'll only come for something which they have seen online okay this is what the hotel is doing that's what we want to experience that's the kind of uh, trend they have and that's a good experience to create more on ashwini why don't i come back to you there's something which is very dear to me the gen z's uh, attention span is very less right so we need to be more focused on what our social media channels are portraying because they come to the hotel to experience what they they see on the social media they are not the usual people or the millennials who come for a buffet and traditional food 
or sitting in a speciality restaurant they will come and see an experience so, so when the question also is a follow up question to this is is it worth having them to the five star hotels or should hotels realign themselves to the, uh, get them to our hotels or should we just leave them the way it is uh ashwini that's a new segment and that's a new kind of a customer which we have seen in our hotel you think they will spend more if we bring them to the hotels they they have the spending power but what they want is experience they want personalization they want the chef to come on the table so they are a different people altogether so we we have to cater to them because that's what is the future for all of us these are the people who are going to come to our hotels now you know i must tell you remember 30 years ago longer or shorter than that we used to hear about the west how they don't save and they spend everything correct that's the new india the gen z is not saving they're spending they're so living so life to the hilt so we need so to realign our, our hotels and our restaurants to invite them even more i mean oh, absolutely right yes. otherwise we'll lose out yeah we don't need to get greedy but we need to kind of tailor ourselves to those expectations right um, you know ashwini uh, i want you to sum it up a little later i have you know there are three subjects which are extremely uh, 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 close to my heart right uh, sustainability and environment in esg is number one one or two top most for me is diversity right and inclusion and the third one is going vocal for local right so why don't i slip one to you and let me hear you vocal for local is not just about make in india uh, alone it's about costs it's about freshness just in time and availability how are you managing this and what has been your success until now i think uh, very very well said and this is again something which i think we spoke at the start is that this is not going to be an option anymore this has to become the sustainable is the new way of working across all of all our hotels and all our restaurants now and i think local sourcing uh, rajneesh mentioned something about farm to table concept or farm to fork concept i think that is something which is uh, we are also starting to follow that but it is not uh, at the moment possible for all our or the entire menu but then at least a good part of it has started so there are certain farm houses that that our chefs have actually gone and contracted with so that helps us to uh, get a cost effectiveness that helps us to know what the seasonal produce is going to be and that helps the, today the chef to curate his menu and as we heard that the menus are now getting changed every 2 months 3 months uh, this helps my chef to curate menus that uh, are able to invite these local sourced products into the into the hotels um, some hotels like the resort and the leisure destinations can do it better uh the city hotels obviously need to also cater to a variety of segments of guests who are coming over here and also the fact that it needs to be available all the time hence there is there is a small section that has started on and this is gradually moving up which is called the local uh, uh sourced organic food which is coming in uh, the the uh, the fact that it is fresh it is sustainable and it is also just in time availability that means you cook when the guest needs it and otherwise this is this is remained fresh it also helps us to keep our menu flexible it also helps us uh, to ensure that the fatigue of people having the same food doesn't come into into play and there is a new option there is something new that's coming in in fact today uh, the guests are even happy to pay slightly higher for food that is organic like the cage free eggs or or something which is which is coming out of a fresh farm uh that that the guests are even happy to even spend slightly more so this is something i would say uh is not just a trend any more now it will gradually move up uh from the trend to becoming the new uh ways or the new new norms for all of us to eat excellent do you want to close the show we've had a great session and an extremely important topic after you've done your bit i'll come in Sure, Pranesh. So I think thank you, thank you to all. I would say for your valuable comments and the views. I think we we uh, captured some some good uh, insights today about reducing carbon footprint, about the design of the restaurant, about chefs, how they are being the creative artists over here, how we could have a passionate chef actually become flexible in his approach, how we get a Michelin star chef into into our hotels, but having our brigade uh, look after the food. 
The portion sizes, a very important aspect, I think we all touched upon, how we need to ensure that the live kitchens that we have <clears throat> are creating the portion sizes, which uh, are, are actually enough and we are guiding the guest of how much to order rather than earlier upselling the guest and taking more of the orders just to increase the revenue. I think that 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 uh, that uh, responsible business uh, aspect has come into all our hotels, and that is something which which we heard uh, in this afternoon over here. Uh, something called the flexitarian uh, that we hear, and of course the organic and the sustainable farming, and the food that is now getting directly uh, from the farm uh, to us minus the pesticides. I'm happy to see that the guests are ready to pay more uh, for food which is which is organic and which is sustainable and also that we control our wastage and not let our food uh, go into the compost as uh, one of our panelists uh, spoke away over here. So with this, I think, uh, Bhubnesh, I'd like to sum it up. I think the food and beverage, as we said, is going to be the, it, it was always, but it's now going to be even more relevant as hotel revenues have optimized in rooms. And there is a revenue per square feet option and opportunity, the revenue management that we have both for catering as well as for uh, for our for our uh, rooms uh, for, for our outlets uh, something which is about speciality uh, restaurants versus the all day dining i think speciality as our panelists mentioned uh, remains to be there 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 will always be a certain niche of guests who want a variety and not just have uh, be there in all day dining and have and try out the speciality restaurants and not everybody would like to go to a high street restaurant or have the time to go out to a high street restaurant so hence for the reputation part of building and also to ensure that we have that uh, pr product available uh, the specialty restaurants uh, need to be around with us. Thank you. You you summed it up extremely well. Um, I I like to even if it's customary that I should have the last word. <laughs> no, absolutely, All right now, now let me tell you, we've got to be frugal. We've got to step back. And you know, this is my word to every hotelier: Do in your hotelier what you do at home. Be a conduce, right? especially when it is about waste, about cooking larger portions, right? About generating waste, right? So you've got to have, you've got to talk to your team. I'm sure you do you in your morning meetings. Uh, you've got to bring in those values. What is it that you go? And rather than upsell to a guest, We've got to find a solution because the guests, when they come over there, they, if the company is paying, okay, I'll have my set of noodles. I'll even get my, uh, I'll get the red curry and I'll get the green curry also, right? And yeah, yeah ice cream, mein kya hai? Wo coconut, de do, yeah, wo that Thai one, uh, that sticky rice with mango, bhi de do. So I think we've got to tell the guests. You know, where was I reading, which is that restaurant somewhere in the West where they charge you for the waste that you generate? You know, so we've got to start doing things. And to your point, Mohit, we were discussing um, the QSR and high street restaurant standalone challenge. Um, I think each to his own. <clears throat> they have their own space. India is a country of 1.4 billion. Before we start reducing, we'll still go higher. We'll get to 1.75 billion. And the middle class with the opportunities that they have and the thick fat purse that they have, not just the big fat Indian wedding. Uh, I think we've got to reinvent ourselves and not, it's not about ceding the space to QSRs and standalone restaurants. Uh, after all, if you have these standalone restaurants which have huge or the Michelin star restaurant, if they are strong brands, we have uh, Dampok, don't we? It's existed all through our lives. We have Bukhara, now you have Loya, you have Machan, uh, right? Or uh, what is it that one that we had at the Oberoi's? In our days, we used to have the ranch while we had the Gunguru. These are extremely strong brands. How do you build brands? Why go too far? You look at what Ashwini does, the great kebab factory, right? These are strong brands and they can give a run for their money uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the high street uh, 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 large, uh, uh, heavy duty brands, right? So 
I think therein lies a great opportunity. The only thing is we shouldn't let fatigue set in. We need to be on on our toes. We need to keep reinventing ourselves. Look at what Namit spoke about. Here's the restaurants, right? So uh, yeah, great opportunity, but a great show. You know, I'm I'm so happy uh, we were able to do this FNB show with you. Uh, it brings in some perspective with room to think. And that said. Let us all get together over a bite. Let's pick the venue and let's go and see what you guys are doing soon and bring in more. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, so thank you all for being there. Thank you for all your efforts. The industry is doing well. It's on a high. It's come back very strongly. Touch wood, wherever wood is. I've got my hand on the wood. So yeah, but let's be responsible. Thank you all. Before you. That, before I thank you all and uh, put lid on and can the show, uh, let me speak a bit about our next episode, next two episodes. Uh, our next two shows are going to be back. Uh, yes, of course, tomorrow, uh, 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 next week, we have a show on Thursday, August 10, and another one on Friday, August 11 at 4 p.m. We'll be back in the financial capital of India, Mumbai. Uh, and uh, see you there. Lock in your time. Be there. Watch us. Encourage us. Thank you all for being there. Ashwini, you've been a great moderator. Thank right? You for me, yeah. Uh, thank you for leading the show. Namit, this is my second show with you, Ashwini and Shuvendu. Thank you for being there. Thank you for your inputs. Thank you, Namit. Thank you, Shuvendu. And First time with Amit, Mohit, and Rajneesh. Thank you all for being there. Thank you for gracing the BW Hotelier platform and the GM show, the Diversity BW Hotelier GM show. Thank you again, Diversity. Thank you. Your Thank partnership you. means a lot for us and for the industry. Keep lifting the bar with each outing, Diversity. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bhutanesh. Bye-bye.